Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome back to the Remote Revolution show where you're joining myself and James once again, sat here with all the pals, all the guys. New pals. New pals. We've, we've topped up these uh, these soft toys in the office here and it's uh, it's it's getting fun. We've got, got a lot of friends. That's a new koala bear there with a little koala attached to koala it. Koala cup. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Anyway, today what we're going to be sharing guys is a little bit of an insight on what we would do if we had to start from ground zero in our business again. I'm going to talk to you about what we're actually going to show you. Really, the idea is what we would actually do with our knowledge today to grow an online fitness business from zero to 10K a month in 30 days, which is what we've done multiple times across multiple businesses. And so we're going to show you how we can, how we would do that. We're going to break down the exact steps and I want to start by just sharing like why this is relevant today. So recently, myself and James have have had to encounter a lot of problems and challenges through Facebook ads and them shutting things down. So this is a pretty uh, it's a pretty big topic right now in the Facebook world. We've got a lot of ad accounts shut down. You know, we've got means and ways in which we're uh, getting these things back up and rolling, but what it got us to think about is okay if this got shut down if that got you know limited what how would we grow our business what would we do if we had to start again if everything crumbled away and uh, we had to we had to start from scratch like what would we actually do so it's sparking this creativity or it's 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 making us it's making sure we are sparking creativity it's keeping us on our toes really and that question is, we thought that'd be a good idea to share on, like what we would actually do if we had to start from scratch. So we, we kind of threw down some points, a little bit of a step-by-step -step plan, and we're going to share that in its entirety today. We're going to go into as much detail as possible. We're going to reference any of the trainings that we can. Uh, but that's what we really want to get into. Um, anything to add, James? Um, yeah, I guess when people hear 10K in 30 days from scratch, is that possible? It's possible when you know the path already. That's the beautiful thing about where we are right now. We've, we've trodden the path many times. We know it's now a highway, so it's very efficient to get to you know, 10 grand a month is relatively small for us. But for you guys who are starting out right now, obviously you don't know that path. It's like a dirt track that you know like there's Nirvana in the distance somewhere, but there's no highway to success for you right now. So what we're hoping to do here is give you the fastest, most efficient path to take, and then you guys can make a decision on whether or not you want to follow it. Yeah. Ultimately, what we've not included in here, I'm going to call this step zero. Step zero right now is is all to do with your mindset and your belief more than anything. Like what you what you just said there, James, is like the fact that we've done it before, we know we can do it again. Like we have absolute belief, confidence, certainty that we can do it again and again and again if we wanted to. Um, and so that's that's a really important point to make. Like the biggest reason that people don't get where they want in business is because they don't believe they can get there. Truly, truly believe like I can do this 100%. And then matching that intention, that, you know, statement, that belief that you claim to have with action, with the, the relevant activity and even more so the principles behind that that may, make you make it visible that you actually will keep on doing that in the face of adversity because that's the biggest the biggest time that you have to prove that you believe in something when when the odds are stacked against you when things go wrong when you know the times get tough your ability to bounce back is all dependent on your belief and times get tough and things go wrong and challenges happen especially when you're starting out things don't go as smooth and perfectly as you want them to so your ability to to get through that is hands down the most important thing. You know, if you don't feel confident in, in growing your business, then, you know, the steps, the tactics, the tools that we're going to share today won't really work. I mean, they'll work, but they won't, they won't get you to where you want to go if you don't believe that you can get there, right? Correct, I mean, they're so good, they're going to work anyway, because you know how it is, right? <laughs> but... No, but they, they, they don't, like, legitimately, like... People will come into our coaching program and some people will come in and they'll do 20, you know, 20 grand in the first 90 days with us and other people will come in and they will do zero. 
So why is that? They've got the same access to resources, same coaches, same everything. Why is it? I'd say zero is a major rarity. It's it's, it's just people come in with the goal and ambition to make 10K a month and fall short. No, people will do zero. They'll come in and they will not take action on anything and they will get zero. Like a client who joins your program will come in and they'll take no action they will get zero. Like we're not immune from it. Like we have an incredible program which is incredibly high success rate. But now and again, our team let in not the perfect fit like it might appear so and they don't get the results. They don't say they're going to do what they're going to do. So regardless of George and I giving you this strategy today, you still have to execute the plan uh, that's at the end of the day. And it happens all the time. It's like, you guys will have people who come and join your programs. You do everything for them. But when they go home at night, they open up the cupboard and they binge on a load of shit. Yep. So it's the same in everything. I, I just want to be real and upfront and honest with you saying like, if you do the steps, you'll get the results. But that's, we can give you this stuff, but you guys need to go and execute. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So with that said, if you want to hear more about mindset stories, what it takes, what you might have to go through, lessons and principles of, of growing businesses, then you can check out episode 100. Oh, yeah. Yes. Episode yes. 100 was good. Me and James went, went down the deep, untrodden paths, unshared paths of our past and uh, how we got to where we are, how we got to making six figures a month. And uh, that's, you know, with the knowledge that we have now, we're about to share with you exactly what we would do with this knowledge of growing multiple businesses to this level uh, and how you can do that yourself in to 10k a month in 30 days absolutely 100 percent doable so let's do it all starts with one one simple one simple thing right what's that james identified market needs step one of the 17 step plan 17 step i don't know if we're going to get to all 17 but We've got lots. So step one, guys, pen and paper, legitimately. Um, identify market need. The number one reason businesses fail is because they do not identify a significant market need. Yep. And when we say market need, that means there's actually a desire for the thing that you're trying to sell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always, the way I look at business, like, you know, if we even start a fitness business, I don't even just look at, oh, we start a fitness business. I look at, like, why are we starting a business? You know, and it all comes down to choosing a market. Like okay, I want I want to work in this market. I have value to add to this market. So you guys pretty much already have that. You know, it's fitness. You want to help people transform their lives. So you have to then go and look at what segment of the market do you want to work with. Where is there a specific need that you can add a specific piece of value to that you can get the best results for? You people you're going to enjoy working with. These are all questions you need to ask yourself when you're identifying, in fact, the market itself, right? And then you dig deeper and deeper and deeper, and this is a, 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 a like a, a depth process. Instead of just going wide, you go deep. It's the same with your market. Instead of going wide, go deep. Just pick a, pick a specific, specific niche. And so <clears throat> digging deep, you start looking at, all oh, right, these are the kind of people I want to work with. What pain do they have? What problems do they have right now? Are they in a position to solve them problems with money? Is really, you know, you want them to solve the problems, you're going to want them to pay you for it. Are they in a position to solve that problem by paying for it? Right? Yep. So a good example, you might love working with students. You think that's an awesome market. You relate to them really well. But are they able and willing to invest? That's the question. And we're going to talk about high ticket coaching here, which is, you know, $2,000 plus for a 12 week online transformation. That's how you get to big numbers quickly, by the way. We're not going to go too much into economics today, but you're going to really struggle unless you're selling a high ticket program around that kind of price point. But students wouldn't work because they are not able to invest. They might be willing. They might be, yeah, I really want to do this, but they've got no access to credit. They've got no cash. They're living off baked beans. Like they are not going to be able to invest in a high ticket program. So you need to be really clear on go to the people who already have money. You'll find it a lot easier than going to someone who has no cash at all. Yeah, bro, you just made a really interesting point that I think we need to wind back on. You said we're not going to do economics, but actually, like, the reality is... Mm, true. That's super important. Yeah. Like, you need to know what you actually want. Like, do you want to get to 10K a month? Like, we're giving you this example as if we have sat down and decided, all right, cool, I want to, I want, I want to make, you know, 10K a month in the next 30 days. It's like, you're going to think bigger than that. You're going to be like, oh, cool, what, what do I want for my business? 
what biz how much money do I want to make? Like, uh, you need to ask yourself, what's your goal? What's, where do you want to get to? And then you can work back from there, right? Yeah, I speak to a lot of people on Messenger and when I ask them how much their offer is and what their goal is, and then I get down to the nitty gritty being like, right, so how many sales do you actually need to make to hit those numbers? How many clients do you need to retain? And the numbers are astronomical. They're like 150, 200 clients yeah. to hit their goals. And it's like, right now, if you're struggling to get 10 clients online, don't think that putting up a Facebook ad is suddenly going to give you 200. Like, mm. it just isn't. Nope. So money is so important to understand because you're building a business at the end of the day. So knowing the economics of what you're trying to create, what the end goal is, is super important. Yeah, and that's that relates back to this identifying the market majorly. So you decide what you want and, you know, the way I would start a business if I started again is I'd be like, cool, so I want to work with a very, very small amount of clients as small as possible you know if i could have 10 clients and make you know 50 grand a month that would be probably my goal or 10 20 clients you know and if you break that down into the economics you're looking at sort of two to five grand a month which is quite a lot you know for fitness business so maybe i'd change the numbers a little bit like the reality of that again looking at the market will be a bit different but let's say i wanted to get paid a grand a month that's why that's why i would probably start as a good threshold like it's where we would start, right? We wouldn't start with a hundred dollars a month. It'd be like more like a thousand. For coaching the clients, yeah. Yeah. That's what we would charge the clients. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and then I'm like, cool. So if you know, I just need ten clients. How do I get to ten k a month? I need ten clients. The truth is, I don't even need ten clients. I actually need four. Cause they're going to pay me. If they're paying four, yeah. Yeah, because they're going to pay me for three months at least. So it's a thousand a month for three months. It's three grand a piece. So I, re you know, I need three point three 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 people you know so four four clients is all i need to get every month to hit my target one a week one a week one client a week to do 10 grand a month if you do a three grand price point yeah and the mindset we're going at this is is how do i get to my goal in the shortest easiest most enjoyable amount of effort time possible because if you do not enjoy this it will suck the life out of you and it will suck. Yeah. So to, to really bring this point home, the first point of here of identifying market need, one final thing is I would look at all the current groups of people that I have in my network. So in person, online, I look at what I've got. So I've got a group of entrepreneurs, I've got a group of mums, I've got a group of dads, I've got a group of students, whatever. And I'd look at all these pockets of people and I'd put them into individual groups and I'd be like, which one right now has significant pain, is able and willing to invest, and I enjoy working with? And I'd pick one of those groups I already have a commonality with, and I'd go after them. Personally, for me, I'd just go and work with high-level entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like, George and I are fortunate where we're in pretty high-level masterminds where people spending two, three grand on a personal trainer isn't a lot of money for them. So I would just go and approach those people, and I'd just pitch them. Yeah. Yeah, I think the mindset that we have now, right now would be we'd be looking at the groups and markets that we already have access to that have access to money. Yeah. Um, and obviously this is all about money, but it's, you know, the markets we have access to that have access to money and we can help them and we will enjoy working with them. Three important points, money, enjoyment and results. If we can tick them boxes for people we want to work with, then we're on the right track and we'd select that market and this would not take long, by the way. Like This is probably the longest, well, maybe the next point, but these first few points, the, the, the longest amount of time you would sit and think and ponder about this stuff. And really, it needs to be done within a day. Yeah, well, you're setting the GPS, right? You're setting the coordinates of where you want to go. Yeah. So you need to actually sit down and think uh, what destination I want to go. You don't just go to the airport and be like, right, I'll go on holiday. It's like, no, no, you've yeah. sat down and thought where you want to go first. Exactly. You don't just get on a plane. You might, you know, you might be in England. You might be in Leeds. I go to the airport. Oh, I want to go to a nice. I want to. I want to go on holiday. You go to the airport and then you land in fucking Manchester. <laughs> it's like, well, that was that was productive. You know what I mean? So you know, I was hoping to get to Asia, but I didn't really think about it. So that's what we need to make sure. Similar wet season though, all year round though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not fucking good. Manchester. <laughs> anyway, point so, one. Yeah. Done. Point one. Identify that market need, match it to your goals, and then once you've identified that person. You need to learn more about them, don't you, James? Step two, understanding the customer. We use customer, it's just a term that's used in business more so than client or prospect. It's just what's used, but you can think of them as a client yeah. if you want. So understand the client that you're trying to work with here. That's point two. 
Yeah. Here's another caveat for you. Quick one is we're thinking about this as a business, not we're expert fitness professionals, right? There's a difference. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about this as a business that wants to fuel our lifestyles and a business must add value and we can add value in this way because we've got skills. Mm -hmm. You know, you have skills. So you're trying to leverage your skills and turn it into a business. You're not trying to just, you know, uh, get a good job, basically. Yep, there's a di difference between self-employed and business owner. That's what George is getting at. And it comes down to a mindset shift, the language that you use, how you think, how you operate, all that kind of stuff, which I'm sure we've done many a podcast on. Many. So we'll just brush that under the carpet for now and move on. All right, understanding the customer. Let's talk about it. So you'll hear people say a lot of the time from the marketing world, you've got to understand the wants, needs, fears, and desires of your audience. So... The best way of doing this, instead of just going out there and guessing, like what do they want, what do they need, what are they scared of, what do they really, really love, you know, all that kind of stuff. Instead of guessing, go and interview people. Yep. Complete game changer. And everyone who joins our mentorship program, it's something that we get them to do from day one because they get real hand experience. They can ask why five, six, seven times to someone who gives them an answer, which means you get to the root cause because you need the deep stuff to be really, really appealing to your market. And then also you're creating a relationship with someone from that interview who you can then sell into the program later. Absolutely. That's the big piece. If you go and interview someone and be like, hey, I'm looking to build out a new program I think could really help you and other ladies like you or other entrepreneurs like you, um, can I just grab 15 minutes to run through some questions with you? And yeah. if you already kind of know that person, then they're probably going to say yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get the information and then at the end of the call, you can say thank you so much. So I'm actually had a lot of ladies who have said similar things to you. So I'm actually going to be going ahead and building out this program in the next 30 days or so. When I launch it, would it be something you'd be interested in finding more about? Mm. And Deborah on the other end of the phone is going to be like, yeah, sure. Like, sounds awesome. I've just told you all my problems. Now I want them solved. So <laughs> yeah, sure. So, so now you can reach back out to Deborah in the later steps that we're going to talk about. It's always Deborah, mate, isn't it? Always Deborah. Always Deborah. Yeah, I think, again, you know, the idea here is like, what would we actually do? We would actually do that. We'd go and speak to, I would how I would approach this personally, I would be like, cool, so I'd look into these networks and start reaching out to people I already know. But my goal would be to get on the phone with people that I do not know. Yeah. The reason for that is because someone you know is going to give you different answers to someone you don't know. And so I would try and use the people that I know as the bridge to the yeah. people that I don't know. So, like, hey, do you know anyone else? that is like you that has similar problems to you or do you know anyone else that might be interested in uh, or have some time for me to speak to them about similar similar situations that's either similar to you or, or quite different to you I, I don't mind i'd love to just get some feedback um you know i'd obviously identify and, and drill down to what what criteria of person i'm looking for again it might be entrepreneur with this kind of business whatever but i would ask them hey who else do you know such a good question to ask who else do you know? Who else do you know? Who else do you know? Even if you've, even if you're already selling clients into your program, who else do you know that might be a good fit for this? You know, um, such an overlooked thing. Yeah. So easy to ask. Yep. It's basically a soft, soft ask for referrals. Yeah. And referrals are a great way to fuel your business in the early days, especially when you're not mastered paid traffic, which we'll get to in a second. So just one final thing on understanding the customer. Um, there's an incredible book by a guy called Blair Warren and it's called One Sentence Persuasion and the one sentence is this people will do anything for those who encourage their dreams justify their failures allay their fears confirm their suspicions and help them throw rocks at their enemies Woo. there are five things so if you understand those five things the dreams the failures the fears the suspicions and help them throw rocks at their enemy which means find the common enemy which might be Herbalife or it might be um, F45 or CrossFit I don't know and you help align them with that common enemy and you create a scapegoat out of them, mm. that's how you win over people and persuade them. Yeah. So that one sentence, go back and listen to that again, rewind 30 seconds. Yeah, 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 Just hit that little rewind button. Yeah, I think uh, the biggest way I would get that information, I would be looking for what are people saying on these interviews, on these calls, on these even text chats that I'm having with people. I'd be doing everything I can and I'd be doing this within like the space of two, three, four days. I'd be like going as quick as possible because that would be my only focus. I have nothing else to do other than speak to people. I'd be like, oh, that's a good point. Who else do I get on the phone with? Who else? Do I, all I do every day, all day, 
and then oh that's such a good point i'd be recording them calls and i'd be sending them off to rev.com getting them transcribed and then i'd be taking them notes and i'd be putting in compiling everything that people are saying and i'd be trying to get the specific answers to my questions i'll be i'll be highlighting phrases words that they are using to describe their dreams failures fears suspicions enemies i'll be using specific words and phrases that they use to describe that stuff it's going to be hardcore epic ammunition for later on yeah such a good point because you know that's the right thing to focus on so you'll give it a hundred percent of your attention yep whereas a lot of you guys listen to this show right now you've tried a hundred things so you don't know what to focus on so you end up with no focus at all right you've got like it's just sporadic it's diffused everywhere and that's such an important point like you've got to follow the plan what we're telling you right now don't get pulled aside thinking oh well what training provider do i need to use do i need to use trainer eyes or pt distinction or oh what Facebook ad account do I need to set up? And it's like, man, this is the biggest problem when people are starting out is they don't have singularity of focus because they don't have a plan that they know works. And it comes yeah. back to this belief thing. And why I'm like, both George and I are so passionate about getting mentors. Whether you decide to work with us or you work with anyone else, like at least get someone who has a proven plan to follow and follow that and give yeah. it your full attention. 100%, 100%. So that'd be full attention going into that, getting that information down and uh, the next piece is kind of it's kind of simultaneous you'll be doing this at the same time step three is building out a list of your assets you know where you're contacting these people i'd be then looking back okay how many how many interviews did i get from this group or that group and i'd be like sweet this is where all my people are at you know yeah this is where all the the right kind of people that i want to work with are I'm starting to make notes of that starting to log store away lists of names email addresses, phone numbers I already have, uh, group names, um, you know, everything I can possibly get my hands on to list out assets, notes, details, information, contact information of potential leads, even if they're not, you don't know them, you don't know if they're going to be a good fit, whatever, man, like, just get that fucking list locked down. This is the best practice. The best practice early on is finding and storing making note of the opportunity that you have yep you're sitting on so much opportunity like you've literally got thousands of people on your facebook friends list you've got so many people that you know in the local area like it's so many people so you just got to build that big big book it's like having a a phone book essentially that yep. you can go back to it's like our mentors call it a book of business and you have a list, so like column A on a spreadsheet, name, column B, phone number, column C, email, or like whatever you've got on them, notes on them, have a contact with that person, and then have dates along all the rest of the columns, day one, day two, day three, day four, how often you're reaching out, what you've sent them, what they've said back to you. And now you can end up with what we like to call a who's got my money spreadsheet. So who's got my money? Because the money you seek is in the relationships you hold. So once you have all of those people listed out, you just now have this big database that you can hit up later, which we're going to come to. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, <clears throat> remember the goal here is to make four sales. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to town. I'm getting as much as possible because it's, you know, it's a numbers game. If I have to speak to a thousand people to make four sales, then I'm going to speak to a thousand people. But at this point, most people don't know. I probably would be able to figure out, we'd probably be able to figure out some metrics. All right, cool, we need to make four sales. Probably need, means we need to get on about six to eight sales calls, maybe 10 at least. So we'd set the number at 10 sales calls. All right, how many, you know, it goes on. We're not going to get into the economics, but like we would be able to figure them numbers out. If you don't know the numbers, you have to just like go in. And track. And track what you're doing. We've done a our last podcast, 104, I think, or 103. Oh, mate, where I went in. Went on data. Go listen yeah. to that show. Anyway, right. should we move on? Yeah, man, absolutely. The next step, once you've got some information and you've validated a problem in the marketplace, you've got ammunition on that problem, you're like, sweet, I can, I can fucking solve this. I'm ready to go. This is the right person. This is the right client. You know, if, you, if you're at this point right now and you're like, oh, I don't have the right client. Oh, I'm not sure this is the right person then just, you know, repeat that process. Like this can be done in a couple of days. So just go again and again and again. So you find the right person, enough pain, enough money, etc. And then move on to crafting your offer for that market, for that individual is more so the, the, the idea we want to get out here is 
crafting an offer for a specific person. What's an offer, James? So an offer is the most misunderstood thing in the online fitness space. I'll start with what an offer is not. It is not your trainer eyes account or your PT distinction account or your Facebook community or how many Skype calls you do with them a week or their email check-in. It's not all the little list of features and benefits that that person gets. That's not your offer. An offer is the way that you communicate the end result to somebody. That's what it is. So it's the pitch is the best way I can put this. So when you start speaking to people about what you do, your pitch is your offer initially. It's the bridge. Your words are literally the bridge from pain to pleasure for them. They're in pain right now. You're going to speak to them and those words are going to, in their head, think, oh my God, this is moving me closer to pleasure. And that's the thing they sell themselves into. They sell themselves into that promise that you're making to them because right now you haven't got a program you haven't got the deliverables you don't need that stuff right now you just need to be able to sell them on the end result because that's what people are buying so that's where your offer is mm. caveat again if you've never got anyone a result then you probably want to go and get someone a result first like before this point like at this point i'd be like sweet do you want to work with me here like i'd probably discount my services personally that's how i would approach it if I've never got, if I've never worked with a fitness client and got them amazing results, I'll discount the services and, and get some results straight away. If you're qualified and you've got an amazing result for your personal self, then yeah. I would go straight in. Yeah, but like, yeah. uh, I'm not, by the way, I want to make it super clear, I'm not promoting unqualified trainers in any way. Please go and get what you need to get done um, to, to coach people. But if you've got a result for yourself, then you're good enough to go. A lot of people think I haven't got enough experience and they need 100 clients over 20 different countries over a 10-year period before they can charge high ticket. It's like, no, man. Or five different courses, five different certifications. Uh, yeah, that's that's why I'm holding off saying like, oh, you need to go and get all this experience. Like, If you've got a result for yourself or somebody else, yeah. then you've got what it takes to go and start charging high ticket. Yeah, absolutely. Because at the end, end of the day, if you don't get them the result, then just give them money back. Like, yeah, yeah, done. literally. Literally, oof, oof. oh, that's opening up a can of worms. I won't go down that route right now. But um, yeah, we'd be like, cool, like what's what's the number one thing that I need to do to get someone a result? Like you kind of need to, you, you do need to know this to craft an offer because you need to know the result that you're going to be able to get someone to, right? Obviously, you know what the market is saying, but you then need to have faith and confidence in what that offer is going to provide, Right. You can't just go on the phone and be like, yeah, man, I'm going to get you to lose 50 kilos in six weeks if you do not believe that. Yeah, you need expertise. You don't need experience. You need expertise. That's the difference. Yeah, so if you're doing it for yourself and you're like, I'm so fucking confident I can do this for other people, then boom, you, you're set. You're ready to go. If you're not, again, I'll be looking at getting results for people and then being able to have that measurable point of reference. And I would go to town on getting people results. Again, because I've got the absolute faith and confidence that I'm going to make this work no matter what. All right. So whether that delays things or what, I don't care. It's going to happen. I'm going to make it work. And I'm going to go and get people results. Because at this point, when you're crafting this offer, you really do not know. You do not need all the fancy stuff in place. Personally, how I would do it, I would just at least have a plan. I'd be like, cool, I'm probably going to use this software and this thing and this thing and this thing. Cool. I would go and ask, you know, five other online trainers that I know. You know, hey, what do you use? I wouldn't just sit there pulling out my hair, trying to learn all these different softwares. I would just go and ask other people what they what they use to get results for their clients, and I would model that. Easy. Model success. Yeah, success leaves clues all the time. Same thing with your market. So we're getting this offer nailed down. We, we're going to be mapping that out in great detail in terms of how we're going to pitch it to someone. Yeah. The words we're going to use. Yeah. It's more about sales here than it is about delivery. Yeah. And sales is, is truly having confidence in what you're selling. Like the result you're selling. Again, the result you're selling. The result, you're not selling the features. <laughs> yeah. So if you're confident in that result, you know, you can put this offer together with the words that you've already got. With the same thing that above where we talked about the fears, the dreams, the failures, the suspicions, the enemies. This is going to give you the ammunition that you need. Again, the words that people have used. Yep. Shameless plug. If you join our program, we help you craft an offer. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got some badass motherfuckers in our program that are geniuses at this stuff. Yep. Geniuses, mate. Geniuses. Yep. Better than us. 
So you can craft an offer, which is, you know, two, th and this is just a point here. Ideally, I would not charge less than $1,800 pounds or euros for a 12 week transformation if I started out right now, regardless of the market, whether it was stay at home mums, whether it was entrepreneurs, whether it was busy, busy professionals in the city, I would charge a minimum of 1800 for that service. Yeah. Yep. That's just me. So that's what we mean by the offer, that a high ticket offer is around that price point, you know, yeah, yeah. That, that plus. George and I would probably go and charge three grand, if not more. Yeah. Another, another thing here, again, back looking at just where we're at, like how we would approach this is, like I have confidence, no matter what program I chose to deliver, even if it included fucking cooked meals for people, if it included, I don't know, someone coming around to the house to fucking give them a massage, whatever it is, I, probably, I wouldn't have found them people yet or that service, that part, how I would deliver that yet in its detail. I just know that that's what I'm going to do because I have 100% confidence that I'll be able to figure that out. Again, it all, it all comes back to this confidence piece. I'd have 100% confidence that I'd be able to figure that out if it came to it. So the next piece of having created the offer is this is where the magic happens. That's it. We're done. Boom. That, that should take you like three or four days. If you've got results before, you're super confident, like you're ready to go and validate this offer. That's Number the five. next step. Number five, validate the offer. This is where we make some money. Uh -huh. Are you ready to make some money? I'm ready to make some money at this point. I'm like, fuck, like, let's go. Why do you hate money? <laughs> yeah. This is the point where I'm like, sweet, let's go make some money. So, validating the offer, the pre-sell. Pre-sell. What does that mean, James? So, a lot of people will try and get all their ducks in order before they go and launch their products or service. They, I've spoke to people on the phone where they've spent 12 months building out a membership site and I ask them how many sales they've made. Do you want to guess, George? Oh, zero. Maybe, zero. maybe, maybe one, your mum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people from love and guilt that you've sold into it. But on a serious note, like, what's the point of spending 12 months building something and having no income from that thing. Like it's, that's so backwards. Any big company, they will go and create a beta product, they'll sell it first, will get testers on board, and then they'll create the product afterwards. Yeah, and it's not only us saying this, all the greatest business people, marketers, salesmen in the world will say that you must validate, you must validate what you're doing first. Yeah. You can't go and, and, and spend hours and hours or days and weeks and months and years on cr creating a perfect solution that no one is going to buy, you're wasting your time. <laughs> They'll tell you they're gonna buy it though. They're like, yeah, I'll definitely get that when it comes out. The important part of validating your offer is getting cash, yeah. money in the bank, like someone giving you a bare minimum credit card details. In reality, you want actually someone to have paid you some money, even if it's transferred yeah. it to your bank account. I don't care. Like what we would do is yes, we would probably set up a Stripe account or a PayPal account and actually get someone to put that money in there. And once they see that money in there, I'm like, cool, this is something someone actually wants now. Someone wants this. Yeah. Someone's just paid you money. If for people this. don't want to offend you, right? If you're going out there and you're speaking to Deborah and you're like, "Hey, Deborah, I've just I've got this amazing new product and service. It's going to do X, Y, and Z," and Deborah's like, "Yeah, that sounds awesome. Like, put my name down." And you're like, "Yay, Deborah's in!" And then two yeah. weeks later, you go back to Deborah. Be like, "Deborah, do you want to start now?" And she's like, "Oh, actually, my dog's just had to go to the vets and uh, I can't afford it." Yeah, there you go. There's a lot of dogs that die in the in the world of sales. Yeah, yeah, that is true. It's shocking. I don't know how they're still on the planet. <laughs> And you know another another really important piece here is is how I would play this personally is I would probably give my first three to four clients a, a guarantee. I'd be like, if you are if you I'd, I'd make sure the guarantee is tight, but I'd be like, you know, if you're if you're if you do not get what I have said you're going to get in the time that I'm going to give you it, not necessarily the result, but how I intend to get you the result. If I've not get that for you, I may, I may put a guarantee on the result. I'm not sure. It depends how, how I map this out or how, how bold the result is that I'm promising. I would give them a guarantee. Yeah, it's, stipula it's stipulations. It's like if you can prove that you've weighed in at this time, you've tracked your food accurately, if, you, if they do all those things, then you can give them a guarantee. Yeah, in Make validating the offer, I'm putting my neck on the line. I'm like, I want to validate this offer and I want to make this real. I'm going to put my neck on the line to make sure that this is truth. So I'm not just going to take people's money and then like, run away with it. I'm taking I'm I'm taking payments and putting guarantees on it no matter what happens. It's protecting my own fucking self worth. If it all goes tits up, I'm just gonna give them their money back. Alright? So I need to be in a position to be able to do that of course. But you know 
you know, I'm going to pretty much do whatever it takes to get them a result. If I'm starting out a business and I've got zero cash in the bank myself right now, then I would be like, I would give them the guarantee, but I would, I would do everything I could to get them what they wanted. And this is not keeping the money here. That's obviously the, the, the end result, but it's, the goal is getting them what they want. Yep, I'll be working 14, 15. In fact, I was in every business that I've started, our days to get the people the results that they need. Super yeah. important. Initially. 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 You cannot get away from it. You cannot do a four hour work week to start your business. It is not possible in my head. I've not met anyone who can do it successfully. Yeah. No one. So anyway, um, final thing on validating the offer. So we're talking about collecting credit card details and the inevitable question that you're probably thinking right now is, well, when do they start the program? So how I would pitch it to Deborah, I'd be like, look, Deborah, right now, we're getting our first five founding members inside the program. And because of that, we're able to do a discount for you right today. It's going to be X down, let's say it's 1800 um, to get you in. And the program's going to start in 30 days time on the 1st of January or whatever the date might be. Yep. So you just give yourself 30 days, depending on how confident you're feeling. You could give yourself 15 days, whatever, yeah. um, to, the, to, to give you enough time to validate it with enough people. I look for at least three to five people to validate my offer. Three to five. And then that now means I can go ahead and I can actually start building out this, this program, like the deliverables, the, yeah. the meat of the program I can start doing. Yeah, and that's the next step, step six. Three to five paying clients, by the way. I just want to make sure that's we've yeah. handed that home right there. Three to five paying clients. Now we're going to start designing what we're actually going to deliver to these people. So how would you do this? Uh, you do this? Yeah, designing the deliverables. So I would keep it as simple as possible. I would literally begin in day one, and I did this. I had a spreadsheet with some workouts in it, link into YouTube videos that weren't even of me. So that was the workout part done. I had some nutrition recipes, like I got from BBC Good Food, like which again, weren't even of me. And then I had a coaching call once a week and an email check-in, like as much as you wanted. Yeah. That was how I started. Yeah, I mean the best way the best way to start a business is in some form of consulting, coaching, and the first thing you're going to do when you sell that thing is consult that person. You're going to ring them on the phone. You're going to have a conversation with them. them, and you know you've already found out the problems using some some kind of sales process. Um, you know maybe you've interviewed them as well. You're going to take all the notes. You're going to put it in one document. That's what I would do anyway. I'd put it in a document and I'd get on the phone with them, and I'd be like digging deep, like what are the real problems, jumping into their mindset figuring out what they're eating already, get them to fill out a major big ass form that tells me everything about their food, you know, what they've been doing the last seven to 14, how many days I wanted to look at. And I'd be getting all that information. I'd be consulting that person. I'd be going into detail because they're paying me to get a result and I need to know as much as possible to get them the best result of their life. So that's, that's the way I'm approaching this. Yeah, what I would not do is go and build a membership site with 12 weeks of modules, no. all automated, thinking that you know it all. Because yeah. that, is, that is a decision based on laziness and ego. One, you're too lazy to go and speak to everybody and get the information you need. And two, you think you already know what the people need without actually speaking to them. Yeah. Like that is just terrible, terrible, just all round behavior, not even business behavior, just terrible behavior. Being so lazy thinking like, oh, you know, I don't have to go and do this research. And then, and then you're just like trying to shortcut the hard yards that you need to earn. Like you've got to go and do the work and speak to people, get real life feedback. And if you don't coach people one-to-one, -one, you're never going to get that. So you need to start off one-to-one -one online, then you can go into group and then you can build out more leverage in the form of membership sites. You do not need a membership site to get to 10 grand a month or even 20 or even 30 grand a month. Like it's just it's not something you're doing. It's pulling your focus away from what matters, which is making sales. Yeah, I mean, even just having this conversation up to the point we're at right now, we've made ten k. We've made ten k in less than thirty days. Probably yeah. within like fourteen days. We've done it before. We've made it in like three days. Yeah, <laughs> we're like thirty grand in like a week. Yeah, be with a brand new thing. So which wasn't built. Yeah, which wasn't. We had nothing. We just consulted the approach. We did a consultative approach and making sure that we were serving them people the way that they needed. And this is another really important part of designing these deliverables is you just launched the program, you start making sales, right? You've got your, your pre-sold people in it. You're going to keep selling. You're going to keep selling. But whilst you keep selling, you're going to be working with these people and you're going to be finding what is the best solution. You're not going to go and build like this automated process because... You know, all these five people might have completely different needs and that's going to be like, fuck, how do I make sure I fit these people's, different people's different needs as I grow this business? 
You know, the reality is you're not going to be doing it on your own forever. There's no possible way if you want to build a huge business. Let's say our goal to grow this business to seven figures, which it absolutely would be if we were to start again, it'd be to get to, you know, at least a million, uh, you know, 100K a month in the shortest time possible. Um, because of the amount of leverage that creates, cash, people, you know, assets, etc. But the <clears throat> the point here is we're like we're working with these people closely so that we can see the truth of what they really need. And that's going to allow us to build the best possible set of platform assets that we can use to, to support our clients, training other individuals to support our clients. We're going to be, I'm going to be looking at all that stuff. I'm going to be looking at, all right, you know, how do people show up to calls? What time do they need to be booking in? You know, I'm going to be looking at things like where are people keep going, keep going wrong? Where do people keep failing? Where are people, you know, falling off the plan, falling off my advice, not taking my advice? Where are they not sticking to things? And I'll be trying to fix them gaps, figure out how to do that and start creating lists of what assets I need to build later that would make my life 10 times easier. You know, I won't be building an asset that makes my life you know, an hour easier a week, it'd be, how do I make my life 10 hours easier a week? How do I, you know, shorten my workload by 50%? What are the, what are the assets I need to build to do that? As later on, I'll be making notes of this stuff as I'm working with these people and keeping on selling. And so that kind of brings us to a point now where it's like, cool, I've got a validated business model. It's all about speed here, but you've also, you as fast as you can is also going to be dependent on how good you are at getting results for people. Uh, it's also going to be dependent on your confidence because they're tied in. And so once you're able to get that feedback from your clients, knowing what they actually truly need and start to build assets that allow you to leverage your time, then only then can you start expanding your capacity. Because that's all I then focus on at this point. It's like, how do I expand my capacity? Because the next step is going to be marketing, sales and scaling and all that stuff, which we'll get into in some detail. But like... The ability to expand your capacity and get, still get amazing results uh, is how you truly grow a business. Yeah, I personally, in most situations, wouldn't worry about that kind of stuff until you're at 20 to 30 clients. Mm -hmm. A lot of people try and worry too soon. They get five clients on board. They're like, oh my God, I need to start hiring coaches. It's like, dude, you've got five clients yeah. and no predictable way of getting more. Yeah. Like, focus. This is the big issue. People will not focus on the hard stuff, which is marketing and sales. Yeah. You'll try and back away from it as much as possible. You try and hire people, outsource stuff, and it's like you've not done the work. You need to earn it, and that's marketing and sales. So we're at the point now, I think, where you've put together your, your deliverables. You're now serving your clients. Things are moving forward, and you now need to grow, like you said. Yeah, I think one thing I would do at this point, I'd, I'd certainly wait until I've, I'm like starting to get pretty damn busy. But at that point, like I say, I would find what is the one asset I can build within a few days that will cut my hours in half? How do I need to change my approach? How do I need to change how I serve my clients? You know, based on what I've learned from them, what do I, what am I wasting my time on? What am I, you know, how am I serving my clients that's a complete waste of time? How can I, you know, do one thing that can be repeated forever? Uh, or how, what can I get rid of that's gonna half my time? What can I, you know, build one asset for? And I'm looking at one or two things here, not a fucking ton of stuff, one or two things, because that's going to like, you know, that half of time I'm going to get back is going to now be focused on marketing and sales. And step number seven is dependable lead generation. You know, my next point here is, can I validate the ability to consistently bring customers in dependably? How would you do it? I would take all the knowledge all the knowledge I've got, all the conversations I've had, all the interviews, all them words, specific words, phrases, and things that people have have given me, and I'd go start going steps deeper. I'd be looking at getting an answer to a question: Is what do people need to know to buy? What do people need to know to buy from me? And then I would take the principles from that and turn it into something. Typically, like a five-day challenge, some kind of thing where they get to taste, get a taste of what I do, get some kind of epiphany from the results they're going to get from me or the way that I help people, some kind of value that they're going to get that's going to make them feel like they've moved forward or feel more ready to buy. That's typically how I would approach 
marketing and by this point you know we've probably only used social media at this point now i'm maybe looking at you know do i make a video do i make some like better more specific content that i can use again and again and i'm talking about facebook ads here i'm talking about you know maybe putting a video on a on a web page you know stuff like this as simple as possible maybe a few videos on web pages whatever it is and and uh, and setting up uh, some way to capture information and that's it ads content information and then i would be looking at putting some money into facebook ads to drive people to a landing page to get their information and then give them some value in return with the goal of getting them booked into a phone call and then i would follow up like crazy with that person and I'll be trying to be design. My system wouldn't be focused on that that piece of content up front. It'd be focused on the follow up of the people that information that I have, people's information that I have. Yeah. There's a big issue with Facebook ads or people's perception of Facebook ads at the moment, where they think it's a magic bullet and it's it's not at all. You're not. You. It's very unlikely that you're going to put an ad out and get someone signed into your program within seven days of that ad going out. It's just, it's very, 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 very unlikely in today's world. Yeah. So possible. it's possible, it's that's possible, why. It? It's possible, but it's very unlikely. So I just want people to understand the reality of Facebook ads and that is you becoming a marketer. And that means having actual conversations with people, finding out what that specific person wants and helping that specific person, like genuinely caring for that person before they invest in your program, if you help them over a sustained period of time, they will eventually invest in you. Like, it's just going to happen. If they, if they still have a problem after that amount of time and you've helped them so far, they are going to invest with you if they're even willing to invest. But I would do things slightly different to George, if I'm honest. It depends what niche I'd work with. If I work with a very easily accessible, broad, broad niche, so I'm saying like mums or dads or you know 20 to 30 year old males, I would use Facebook ads 100%. But if I was working with a more tailored niche, let's say I was working with teachers, or I was working with entrepreneurs, I would go to events and I would um, be a participant at that event. I would network like hell with people. I'd try and speak at those events. I'd put on my own small events for these people. And I'd be looking to get 20 to 30 people in the room each time, maybe do two of those a month. And I'd do that for probably three months or so. And I'd build up a pretty good... Um, book of business from those people probably have 200 to 300 names plus their referrals and all that kind of stuff and that would probably be um enough for me to be doing 30k a month kind of thing for for the first three months of my business yeah event, events are powerful man it's the fastest way it's the fastest way to build rapport is in in person like if you're struggling to sell online right now to strangers then you need more rapport and to build rapport online you need to understand psychology persuasion messaging and that's hard to do when you're starting out from fresh. Like I'm very fortunate that I understand that stuff so I can build relationships very quickly online. But when you're fresh and your communication skills literally suck, um, you're going to struggle. So yeah. for a lot of people, it might be best to actually go and meet someone in the flesh and have that biological connection. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it just kind of shares our different personalities. I would probably also do that. It's just the ordering of things. Because the, the reality is like, it's where our skill sets lie, right? That's how we would approach things. And, you know, if we were starting another business together, we'd probably just fucking do both. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we'd do one thing at a time, of course. But, like, the, the cool thing with events as well, like, I've talked about Facebook ads, but events are also as sustainable. Like, if we wanted to make a million dollars, either of them two methods are powerful. These are just methods. There's principles behind these that are the most important things, right? The principles are more important than the tactics and the methods. Okay, um, so that's really what's important here is what is your goal? Well, how, where are you trying to get to here? And we've put this in at step eight. You know, I kind of think it, it could have come before this. I put it here because of what comes after it. Yeah. I think when you're about to make the, the next step after, you need to have these things here. But I, yeah. I'm, just, I'm in the mindset, whereas if you're starting out from scratch right now, you don't need to sit down and build out like this 120 page document of where you want to build this company and who you want to employ and so like so many people get lost in this and I speak to people on the phone and they're like oh I need to go and build a business plan out and I'm like look dude you don't even know what a business plan needs to look like you're going to go and google it and create this thing it's like it's ridiculous so you know we've got point eight here which is vision culture and values and I think once you've got cash in the bank and you're starting to see what this thing could be then you're going to get a more accurate vision of, of the future so that's why I left it to yeah. this to this point
Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. I think the way I look at dependable lead gen is like, you should be able to generate leads organically, like dependably, before you get onto like tools and methods that are outside of social media. Like, by organic, like I'm talking about social media, like you can 100% get to your goals using social media and not spending much money at all on Facebook ads or any kind of advertising. Um, then kind of growing that and making it more dependable at a higher level is, it requires a vision. Like we've reset our vision, our intentions for the future again and again and again and again and again. We probably will do it again and again. And, you know, we talked earlier at the start, like about having a goal where you want to get to with this. I always think that, like, again, this whole process that we've talked through here it shouldn't have taken more than 30 days, maybe 90 days. That's, just, that's okay. But at this point, we're starting to look at, right, what's the big picture here? What do I really want to create? You know, I've got a potential opportunity here to have an impact, create an amazing income, and, and do some pretty awesome stuff and build perhaps, you know, a, a you know, multi-million dollar business if that was my goal, which it would be, you know, talking about what we would do. And that would be my goal at this point. And I'd be like, how do I build a vision, a compelling vision that excites me and my clients and anybody that I bring on my team or anybody that I encounter? A compelling vision, something that excites people, right? Because that's the thing that's going to get you to the fucking, the stratosphere. Mm. Stratonites. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, point eight, vision, culture, values. This is... I don't think this is something we've talked about in an episode yet. Maybe it's a future episode. Oh yeah, for sure. Maybe it's a future episode. Um, but really short, what is it that you see for the future of your business? Thinking one year, three year, 10 year chunks is going to be good for you. Um, the values that you embody. So as a company, we have a set of values that are actually shared between our team. So we looked at who in our team has certain values that we think are strong. And then we pulled those all together and had a group of set values. So if you're starting out right now, Go and ask your friends, your families, and be like, honestly, what values do you think I live by? And go and ask them that question. They'll tell you. They'll tell you what kind of person you are. And then you want to start displaying those values uh, outwardly in your business, to your clients, to people who you're about to hire, which we're going to talk about next, so people align with you. Because otherwise, you're going to be bringing people on who might be a really good, like, skilled fit for who you need in your company, but you two just don't get on. Like, mm -hmm. you're chalk and cheese. You rub each other up the wrong way, and... You, you're just never going to have a business that way. Yeah. So that's what values really are. This is what, this is what, this, man, fucking episode like two, episode two of the podcast, we, we interviewed AJ Merzad. Maybe it was episode three or four, one of them. First four episodes, AJ Merzad. I think it was. It was early days, mate. It was early days, sub 10. Oh, he was one of the first three, yeah. Yeah, and he said, he said, ask the people that you know, if you had to describe me in, I don't know if it was one or three words. Like, what would it be? Yeah, I love that. It was so cool. I posted that on Facebook as well when he, when he said that. And uh, I got some interesting responses. And it's and it's the persona that you have been putting out. And it allows you to see who you have been, how you have been perceived, as well as perhaps, you know, maybe where you need to change things, but also like identifying the, the, the points that you truly resonate with, you know? So that's what values are all about. And... Uh, when it gets into culture, that's really all about how how the values are implemented. Yep, exactly. The the what it looks like in real life, you know, the the physical manifestation of the values. Yep, but yeah, like, it's, it's how you act and treat each other. That's what culture is. It's 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 treatment, really. Yeah, for sure. We're gonna sit down for a couple of days and probably map this stuff out and come with some ideas, challenge them ideas, look at the goals, look at the the constraints of getting to them goals. How we're going to get there if this doesn't work? How we're going to get there if that fails? What's going to change at this level? And just really start hammering out ideas and starting to try to. The goal would be to get to a point where we have a a, a fairly clear plan. It doesn't need to be super crystal clear, but a fairly clear plan on what we're going to do for the next, ideally three years. Like that's really the picture that I'm trying to get in my head. What I'm going to do for the next three years, and then I'm going to distill that down to one year, and that's going to be my focus. 100%. And, you know, if we're at this point in the business, we've got dependable lead gen clients, great results. We've started to develop an amazing program. We're going to start hiring people. Step nine. 
Step nine, we're going to start getting people on our team recruited. And again, this is like a 30 day process so far, maybe, maybe 90 days. Yeah. Now you've gone over, you've gone over the first sort of delivering the program, dependable lead gen. You've probably passed the 30 day point here. Yeah. You might even be looking at four months cause you've had, you know, maybe several different clients start at this point and finish the program. Um, and we start looking at what are all the activities that I'm wasting my time on? What are the things that I hate? What are the things that are currently now below my pay grade? There's going to be a load of admin shit you're probably doing. Uh, I would have hired an assistant before this point, personally. I'd probably hired an assistant from the get-go. But if I had zero money, I wouldn't have done. Yeah, if you didn't have the knowledge that you have today. Because you've got to know what to give that. The, the, the problem with that, for a lot of you guys listening, is you wouldn't know what to give the assistant, and it would become a burden for you. Yeah, you can totally yeah. fuck it up. Yeah, you just... Yeah, you hire someone to take a burden away that doesn't take any burden away. They just add to it. Yeah, they just cause more problems for you because you don't know how to actually manage that person. You don't know what to give them. So that's why we, well, I sort of, we did this together, but why we didn't really put the um, hiring of an assistant at step yeah. one. But yeah. yeah, if it truly was us starting again from zero, then we'd build a team from day one. 100%. Yeah, most likely, yeah. Yeah. I, again, from zero, meaning the zero cash in the bank, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hire people immediately. I'd probably start looking at getting people on, on a commission commission kind of structure because then you know when the business succeeds they succeed but you know for most people that's not that's not relevant just because we've had the experience in building a team and that's why we would do it at this point because that experience of building a team is the most valuable experience you could possibly get you know the only reason companies are successful is because they're able to manage their resources better than anybody else it's not how many resources they've got it's how they manage the resources and uh, you might want to write that down right there it's not how many resources they got, it's how they manage their resources. And the most important resource in the world is time, which comes from people. Yeah, you create more of it by having more people. Yeah, yeah. leverage. So, anyway, we're going deep in some, some shit here. Who do we hire? Yeah, a couple of people we'd hire, like I said, assistant. And uh, we'd like, like I said earlier, the dependable lead gen would be all dependent on how I follow up with people. Yeah, you can have to do so much more follow up. Crazy like, amount. We see it with our students who are doing 10K plus and they're spending 50% of their time following up people. That's yeah. in Messenger, on the phone, in person. 50% of their time is spent in chats, in conversations. That's what we mean by follow up. You're in a conversation of some kind, which is a lot of time. So there is a role for this. It's called an appointment setter. And you would have someone inside of your chat profile, whether that is on Instagram, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's many chat, whether it's literally on the phone. And these people would be essentially prospecting and they'd be identifying if someone's a good fit to get on a sales call with you. And that's what would be happening there. We call that person an appointment setter. And that's someone that you can get hired reasonably cheaply. So we get an assistant and an appointment setter as George tries to fix his laptop. Because yeah, yeah it's about I'm about to run out of battery. It's going to be great, mate. You're going to have really nice um, uh, audio in that room. Nah, not with this long wire. I bet it's going to sound great. Don't you worry. Really good stuff. We get down here. Anyway, so um, hiring a team. Is there anything else you want to add on that, or should we just riff on? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I would also. So it depends at this point. I would be looking at what clients have been from a program that I can now hire. They would be the first people I'd be looking at to hire. You know, maybe there's a bunch of people. You know, if we're working for with entrepreneurs, it might be less likely. But I might be asking them, hey, who do you know that I could hire as my assistant? Hey, who do you know that I could hire to be an appointment setter? I'd also be like, hey, who do you know that I could hire that would come and coach my clients for me? Mm. Would you be interested in that? You know, I'd be asking my clients if they'd be interested in working for me because they're now uh, sold on me by this point. I would be making... Like Vision, say, culture, values, they yeah, understand it. I'd be making sure of that. And I'd be, I'd be making sure that I get them locked down. You can trust them. It's a big thing. It's a big thing with hiring. It's trust. Is the person going to do what they say they're going to do over a prolonged period of time? They might show that they're going to do it for a week or two, um, but if they don't align to what you're trying to achieve, then they're probably going to get pretty bored and, and they're not going to stop doing that thing. 100%. Cool, man. Point 10? Point 10. Let's do it. Point 10, I've just put sell, sell, sell. I cannot stress this enough. Like I love sales. Sales, in my mind, is the most important skill that you can learn in business, full stop, because you're selling on some level whether you're selling an idea to your partner or your team, or you're actually selling a product, you're constantly selling all the time, every word that comes out your mouth. And I hate to say it because I'm not a fan of Grant Cardone, but the book, Sell or Be Sold, I think that title is incredible. You either are selling or you're being sold to. 
in any form of communication. So at this point, I would not gonna be I wouldn't be trying to focus on all these fancy technologies and these crazy automations like both George and I did in the early days, um, oh, yeah. which we wouldn't have done going back now. I would literally be hammering the phones, selling as much as I could. I'd be getting four to five appointments a day in my calendar and I'd be selling like mad. And then I'd be making sure that I'm hiring the people who need to fill the gaps when I'm yeah. selling. That's how I would do it. Yeah, this is yeah absolutely spot on. Me too. I'd be just be looking at, you know, how do I free up more time to sell? Like my priority would be selling as the business owner, as the leader. My priority would be selling. I'd be trying to get myself away from uh, coaching all the clients as soon as possible, uh, making sure that I've got leads coming into my inbox as often as possible. Um, I'd be making sure that clients are getting amazing results, making sure that all the other shit that needs to be going down is getting ticked over in the background. I'd probably start hiring some people that I can pay lots of money, like you know, really qualified accountants, probably look at maybe hiring a really qualified marketing person. Um, but really my priority would be service at this point. Like how do I get myself out of service, maintain amazing results and sell more? Yeah, I just want to observe from the masterminds that we go to where people are making beyond six figures a month, every single one of those people are good salesmen. Mm. Every single one of them, everyone. So if you cannot sell, I'm, I'm, I'm adamant on this, you cannot build a business. I'm yet to meet someone and I, I don't buy into the philosophy where you can hire someone who can sell for you. Like that is a one in a million chance of you having that happen. happen. You need to go and master sales. Like it's just a reality. It's mastering communication. Yeah, that's what, yeah sales it's, communication, mm, same, same. It's mastering that really to be a business owner and to be really successful at being a business owner, you have to understand that and you have to be able to implement that and do that and breathe that. And it's not, you're not, you're never just selling your program. Like we don't really sell anymore. What we sell now instead is jobs. We yeah. sell vision. And then once we stop doing that, we'll be selling something else. You know, you're always selling as a, as a business owner. Um, so that's really, really important. Super, super important. The principles behind that. Another big focus right now is whilst I'm doing all these sales is I would be, uh, I'd be focusing on what I can learn. I'd be learning as much as possible from what's happening. What are the principles that have worked here? How can I repeat them? How can I repeat them? How can I repeat them? I'd be looking at for the I'd be looking for the repeatable things. And the repeatable things are not the Facebook ad copy. Yes, that is probably part of it, but that's not really the repeatable thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for why did that ad copy work? I'm looking for why did this funnel work? I'm looking for why did the sales process work? I'm looking for why did these clients get results? I'm trying to distill things down into principles because I know that the tools and methods are going to break 100%. They're going to stop working. And maybe this is high level for some people right now, but when you get to this point in your business, principles are, are, are the most important thing. They're always the most important thing, but now you have the opportunity of creating your own. It's pretty high level shit. On that note, George, I know we've got many more points that we could go into. We've been rambling on for an hour, which Solid, mate. By anyone's standard, it is a long time to listen to us two numpties. Oh, mate, they're, so, they're loving it. No. I can hear the crowd screaming. I think we'll wrap this one up. We might do a part two, and we'll come back and we'll conquer some of the other points because uh, they're definitely higher level and stuff you're probably going to be looking at. Uh, yeah. I pretty much just fucking said all that. Anyway, let's come back to it. We'll come back to it. We'll see what's going down anyway, guys. So thank you very much for checking out the episode today. Uh, it's been a pleasure doing this. I wish you could see the current setup we've got. We are sitting in a room full of Ikea furniture that's not built with some that is built with many cuddly bears and George is standing in between two rooms in a doorway because holding my laptop charger in he's holding his laptop charger in because oh, so he can actually get enough uh, audible sound from his microphone whilst Enjoy. charging it Enjoy. what a mess anyway guys thank you for checking out the show as always please go across to iTunes and give us a five star rating that would be absolutely awesome and if yeah. you guys want our help then as always like email us message us at James Moody Official on Instagram is a really good place to reach out. I'll personally get back to you. And if you found this useful, this however many step plan, then go and implement. 10 steps. 10 steps to success. Loving Ten, it. 10 steps to 10K. Way. <laughs> Absolutely loving it. All right, well, guys. Thanks for listening, guys. Peace out. Peace out. Thanks for listening to the Remote Revolution Show. If you enjoyed the show, please head across to iTunes, YouTube, and our other social media platforms to leave us a quick rating and review. 
And if you'd like your questions answering, we'd love to hear from you. So please send them into info at remoterevolutionshow.com. And please remember the show is all about growing the remote revolution. So if you wish to join the community and scale your business, then please head over to www.remoterevolutionshow.com or click the link in the show notes to grab our free download. Yes, seriously, don't be lazy. Click the link in the show notes and grab the downloads. And as always, we'll see you next week.